Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. The violent professionals, an army of paid assassins. The Violent Professionals takes you on a death-defying, non-stop ride from the back alleys of the Mafia hideouts in a desperate dash for freedom. The Violent Professionals takes you to the top, to the king of crime. Time is getting ripe for us. People are finally beginning to get fed up with the power vacuum in this so-called democracy. You have 30 seconds to go. 30 seconds. Come on out with your hands in the air. For the hunted, there was no escape from the rogue cop. Your time's up. Turn killer. <laughs> the Godfather gave you an offer. He gives you no alternative. Take the most terrifying, incredible, death-defying roller coaster ride ever shown on the screen. For those who would defy the law, there is no escape. The only way out is death. See The Violent Professionals, starring Richard Cotty and Luke Miranda. The Violent Professionals, nobody's death wish. And welcome back, ladies and gents. You've just heard the trailer for The Violent Professionals. This is disc number 66 in the Italian collection by 88 Films. And the website says thus, Tough Cop Giorgio played by Luke Marinda of Torso, doesn't like to play by the rules, going as far as gunning down the ruthless criminal in broad daylight. After he's suspended from the force and his boss is murdered, he goes on a brutal undercover dive into the criminal underworld to expose a criminal organisation with no respect for authority. Starring Richard Conte of The Godfather with a powerhouse score by the great composers Guido and Maurizio De Angelis, who did Street Law and The Big Racket, this blistering Italian crime classic blazes on Blu-ray with every car chase and gunshot more mind-blowing than ever. Directed by cult filmmaker Sergio Martino, who did Hands of Steel in 2019 after the fall of New York. Special features for this one, for the first 1,000 copies, you got um, an O-ring, um, a 2K master with the original 35mm camera negatives. This is all the stuff that's now available for all releases. High definition 1080p presentation in 235 one aspect ratio. A 2.0 dual mono DTS HD master audio and English soundtrack. And a 2.0 dual mono DTS HD master audio Italian soundtrack with newly translated English subtitles. You get an audio commentary by Kim Newman and Barry Forshaw. Out for Justice, an interview with actor Luke Marenda. Story of X, an interview with actress Martine Bouchard. The Rules of Crime, an interview with writer Ernesto Gastaldi, a violent professional, an interview with director Sergio Martino. Luciano Ross, a tribute by Kier Le Genis. English trailer. Reversible sleeve. This is regional locked to region A, B, and C. The audio is DTS HD ME mono. Picture is 1080p HD 2351. The runtime is an hour and 40 minutes. The languages are both English and Italian with English subtitles. So this was a first time watch for me. Um, if you've been listening to podcasts under the stairs for any length of time, you'll know I'm a big old fan of Sergio Martino. I don't necessarily think he is the best Italian director but he is easily the most consistent Italian director. And that, 
none of these movies are what I would call like top tier in any of the fields. He certainly has Jallos or the kind of sci-fi ripoff stuff that are in talking for being near the top contention, but I don't think he necessarily like ruled the roost on any one genre. He's not like an Argento with Jallo or a Filchy with Zombies or anything like that. But what it was was just like a very, very, very safe pair of hands. Like you gave this guy a script, you gave this guy money, and you told him what to do, and he will turn in a incredibly well directed film. And that's kind of what you get with the violent professionals. Um, this to me is not necessarily kind of top tier Polizateshi. Um, if I'm honest, it's probably mid range. It's not a particularly long film by those standards, you know, an hour and 40 might feel a bit long to some people out there, but some of the Police Hiteshi movies go well over that, up, you know, up towards the two hour mark, mostly because some of those Dirty Harry movies went up that high as well, and that was just kind of seen as par for the course within the genre. Um, I think what it does well is it handles the violence very well, you get a lot of like emphasis put on how our cop is very happy to blur the lines of what is legal and illegal and most of the time as the audience you're kind of with them i mean the opening gambit to this movie here has you know criminals escaping a like a high security train uh, flagging down like an innocent father and his daughter murdering the father kidnapping the daughter before we assume murdering her as well and then you get the after effect of him a police officer who asks more than once for the criminals to put their guns down, which they don't do, and he shoots them. But in this movie, he's held to task at that, and apparently it's not the first time he's kind of went across the line. He's done it in front of a reporter as well. Um, and then we kind of follow, like it said in the synopsis there, his kind of his foray into the underworld as he tries to take down uh, this kind of well-to-do, and when I say well-to-do, I mean actually they're well in doing what they're doing, criminal organisation who appear to have their fingers in all the pies and are actually making a gambit for kind of city domination. So he kind of takes his he takes it into his own hands, um, gets a little bit uber violent and tries to bring them down. Um, camera work in this is fucking stellar. I mean, like all the action sequences are vibrant, they're kinetic. It's got a pace and an energy, mostly because of the score. Um, not necessarily everything you're seeing on the screen is happening at this high octane pace, but the score constantly makes you feel like you're being propelled forward. So, I mean, that's, that's one of its strengths. And like I say, when you've got like a good score propelling you through and you've got great cinematography, uh, great locations, which is like Martino's calling card, a lot of that's, you know, a lot of that's going to work for, for you. I think our main kind of tough cop played by Luke Miranda. He's okay. I, I don't think he's, like, great in this, but I don't think he's terrible either. I think he always kind of... He maybe suffers a little bit from smell the fart acting, as Joey Tribbiani from Friends would say. He's, like, a little bit too intense with this kind of smouldering look where I'm like, you should be, like, fucking angry as fuck right now or sad or something, but there's always this kind of stop... Because he's, you know, he's a dirty Harry. You know what I mean? He's the, he's the Clint Eastwood and Clint Eastwood can't really do any of those either. So it's just kind of like a uh, kind of snarl, get off my lawn, is, is kind of what you get with him. Same with uh, Richard Conte, uh, who's, you know, in here as the, you know, his performance is, is great and you can tell, like, when you juxtapose him and Luke Miranda, one is he better actor than the other, and you know I kind of I kind of enjoy that. You know I I think the the villains are like businessmen and less villainous, which I also kind of enjoyed. This idea, this criminal organization being so well put together that they actually feel like an organization that's going out their way to undermine. It's very comic book esque actually. It's like you know very smart piece together organisation that will dismantle the fabric of law and order within the, the, the city. I like those things. Um, I suppose the biggest issue is that it repeats a lot of the same beats. You're essentially 
you know, you're following him taking down the organisation one step at a time, which basically involves him doing the same thing over and over again, and that's where the runtime maybe doesn't benefit it. At an hour and 40, this felt like maybe a good 15 to 20 minutes too long. We could have had this done. And also, it kind of ends in a logical place, but I don't think it's merited for the character. I found that kind of actually a little bit cheap, the, the, the way they closed out the movie overall after everything you've seen this guy go through i just don't believe that's what he would do so that kind of works a little bit against it and then also it's just not necessarily all that remarkable um it kind of is and you've also got to take you know into account when the movie came out but it is just a lot of things you've seen done in movies all around this time and it's not necessarily bringing anything fresh or new or a bit of flair out with the Martino magic which would necessarily make it all that different like I can imagine a year from now struggling to remember quite a lot of what happened in the violent professionals um it just kind of it's just gonna morph into so one of the things I see at times about Martino's work in Jallo's like when I'm watching them, I remember all the details of them. And then if you ask me a year later about specifically one Martino Giallo, and then you start talking about a scene, I will probably struggle to pick which one it is that it's from. They all kind of just meld in to each other after a while. So yeah, not not a terrible movie, not an exceptional movie, a fun romp while I watched it. It's got some issues, but let's be honest, uh, show me an Italian movie that doesn't. And I will say, that probably wasn't directed by Sergio Martino. Um, the special feature, well, let's talk about special features in general. This looks fucking mint. Uh, the 2 key restoration here is lush and vibrant. And like I say that, it really shows off Martino's direction, which is uh, impeccable as always. Um, the, the audio commentary, which I turned on and off with Kim Newman, always great. And actually, I did check out all the interviews here. So you've got like four four or five interviews, I think, um, overall on the disc. And all of them are great as well. It's really cool listening to Ernesto Gastaldi talk because he literally worked with everyone. And he had a really interesting insight to just how he got involved with a writer on projects, which wasn't always at the inception of a project. Sometimes kind of happened at, towards the end, you know, go and save us, please, Ernesto. And he'd be like, all right then. Um... So yeah, overall, I think The Violent Professionals gets a three. I like, I, I, I don't, I, I can't see myself rushing to this one again, but I didn't dislike it in any way. It just kind of felt a bit paint by numbers, um, which was to be expected, if I'm honest. It's kind of where I thought I was going to land with this, and I was proved right in advance of, which is a smug feeling if you're someone like me. So yeah, three out of five for The Violent Professionals. I'm